We're going to talk about how to stop procrastinating and some things you can do instead, coming up. What's going on guys, my name is Tim Ruswick and today we're going to talk about the famous subject of procrastination. Uh, this is something I've been that has been requested a lot. I get a lot of emails about this, a lot of comments, a lot of tweets. Uh, and it's something that I've been wanting to talk about for a long time, but I just, I didn't feel like I was ready. I didn't feel like I had all the answers. And I still don't have all the answers because procrastination is still a problem in my own life. So the things I'm going to share with you here are going to be based on just some of the techniques and tactics that I've used to kind of combat procrastination. But that bastard keeps sneaking in on me. So I'm still working on this. I'm still trying to fight it. And I'm sure there'll be more videos in the future on the different things that I do as, as they evolve and as I kind of get a grip on this. But still something I'm, I'm struggling with. A lot of us are. Procrastination is, is a bitch, but it happens. So three primary things that I want to share um, about procrastination specifically. Um, I notice for me a lot, my procrastination is usually based on indecision. So when I am avoiding working on a game or I'm avoiding doing something, there's usually a decision to be made, right? Like I, for, I, and I don't know if, if most people are like this, but I know for me, like if, if I have to do laundry or something, it's not usually a big deal because I just have to put the laundry in the washer, you know, like that's, there's no decision there. But for example, if I have to finish my game and I have a bunch of shit to do, Picking which thing to do is usually like part of the reason why I just like end up on YouTube or Facebook or or Reddit or whatever. Uh, and it's like not wanting to make that decision is what what prolongs the difficulty of that. Like I know responding to email, I procrastinate this way more than I should, but a lot of times I'll get an email and I need to respond to it, but I don't exactly know how to respond to it. So I just it just kind of sits there in the inbox after a couple of days. And after a couple of days, I feel stupid responding to it because now I'm a couple of days late and I look like a stupid idiot that doesn't respond to email immediately. And then it's like, so it never gets responded. The person probably thinks I'm an asshole. And then it just spirals out of control, right? Procrastination sucks. <laughs> That's the thing. So sometimes making the wrong decision is better than making no decision. And this is something I learned in business, uh, specifically in tech and startups, because but it applies to game development totally. Sometimes just moving forward and taking action is better than, or just taking action in the wrong direction is better than not taking action at all. And I find this the majority of the time because when you're taking action and you make a wrong decision, you're still taking action. So you can course correct, you can make the better decision, you can change it, or you can just move forward with what you're doing. But almost, 99.99999% of the time, taking action in the wrong direction is better than taking no action at all. Uh, I have a quote on my uh, email from my freelance company that says, indecision is the mother of mediocrity. Don't be average, make a decision to be excellent. Because I think the quick decisions are what defines average people from great people. Um, a lot of the great people that I know, the people that I admire, the mentors in my life, the people that I look up to, they're decision makers. They just fucking make shit happen. They just decide. And I always looked up to that because I was always like the dude that would do 10 million hours of research and, and look up on Google and watch YouTube videos and do all this. But I realized all of that is wasted time, right? Like if you really need to do research on a decision, like you really truly need to do research on a decision and figure out which, which way you're going to go, what what mechanic you're going to build, what art style you're going to, whatever it is, you got to research. You can find the majority of what you need to know in the first 10, 20 minutes. Everything after that is, is useless, right? Like there, there, there are things that will improve you, you 1% or 2% or set you off in a slightly different direction. But it's like the 80, 20 rule, right? Like you, you gotta, you have focus on the big chunks of stuff that that's how you get more shit done. That's how you move forward and stop procrastinating. You just make a decision and you go, you move. Uh, I have a video called, um, go with good enough. And that's a really good concept to stop procrastinating too, because a lot of procrastination, uh, comes from decisions, but it also comes from, uh, perfectionism, right? Like we, we want to keep 
focusing on on shit and we get caught on it so much that it stops us from moving and you always want to be moving you always want to be moving forward so um sometimes the wrong decision is better than no decision just remember that like i've been in a lot of shit in my life that was a result of indecision so and not just game dev financial decisions all kinds of stuff so that's the first one um second one i think is to break tasks into actionable chunks and I've shared this before, I think it was in the overwhelm video um, and a few other concepts like that for productivity, but I notice because a lot of my procrastination is based on indecision, um, a lot of it comes with not knowing what to do or not wanting to make the decision to pick one thing. So if I have a bunch of actionable items that I know will take me anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes to complete, and that's important, the timeline is important. Uh, I know that if I could just pick the top list, I can get into my mode of productivity and just start developing. Um, the actionable items that are 10 to 30 minutes each, I would say, I think is the sweet spot for task lists. A lot of people make this mistake, and I see this all the time, because we have a task tracker on Game Dev Underground, so I can look at everybody's tasks. And one of the things I've done is I've made a research on how people use the tool and what they do. And I notice a lot of the tasks in the task manager, the task tracker, they, they're big things like finish the game engine or um, complete the art or these big massive projects. One of them was like, you know, uh, create 10 weapons or create 25 weapons or something like that. And like those tasks, like the 25 weapons one, maybe that's actionable in a way. But that's not that's gonna take you days or weeks to to fix all that, to do all that, right? And that's no one wants to spend that much time to click a checkbox, you know? For me, like that that clickness of the checkboxness uh kind of gets me excited to keep going. And I find that that 10 to 30 minute mark of checking shit off every 10 to 30 minutes, if I can do that. I get momentum going. I'm like, oh, cool. I want to I wanna get this whole list done. And then I find if I have those action items in the checklist that are 10 to 30 minutes and I got, you know, five to 10 of them in a day, I feel really productive at the end of the day getting that whole list done. Um, and sometimes I'll even make my load smaller just with those items just so I can kind of get through the day if it's particularly a day where I'm really procrastinating. Um, so actionable items are a big part of it too. I think that's the second one. Uh, the third thing that is huge for me with my procrastination, it, it almost universally changes the way that I operate, is changing my environment, right? Like I, I love this room, it's awesome. It's a, it's a cool little office, it's very comfy. I got my shit set up the way I like it. I got the lighting set up, I got daylight bulbs. I got uh, everything that I need in here and it's awesome. But sometimes I don't want to be in here. <laughs> and sometimes being in here just makes me procrastinate. So I like to go to Starbucks or I like to go to Panera Bread or I like to go to some of these other internet cafes, hang out and get shit done. And I noticed like I tried this with Panera specifically because I don't know if Panera is all over the US or all over the world or not, but um, it's in California and Florida. And those are two places that I frequent the most. Uh, but I tried this in Panera specifically and there's something that like happened psychologically when I would go in there and I would work and I would get shit done. I noticed after like a month or two of doing that, um, it used to be a lot worse than it was now. Sometimes I was going there three to five times a week, like ridiculous, like, it was like my office, right? Like I knew the people there knew me by name and they knew my order. So uh, I don't do that as much anymore, but I noticed that when I go there, it's like I go into productivity mode. It doesn't matter how how much procrastination I'm doing, how I feel, whatever. When I walk in those doors and I sit in my spot, it's like it activates me. Like it's my brain knows that this is a fucking workplace and that I shouldn't mess around here. Uh, it's like a, an emotional imprint in a way. I don't know if there's a name for it or a term for it or whatever it is, but I notice that places for me get emotional imprints uh, for whatever I do in those places. So. I found that like Starbucks and Panera for me have these positive emotional charges and sometimes when I'm in a rut uh, working for a couple weeks on end and I'm just not feeling it like I'm getting to that burnout stage or whatever being home or being in the office is like 
it has that negative emotional imprint. So getting out of the house and going to one of these places like Panera Starbucks gives me that positive imprint and then my brain is, okay, now here's the place to get you done. Uh, so that's part of it, but also just the change of scenery sometimes. Panera usually has super big windows everywhere and it's super bright. This place tends to be really dark. Like I love it at night because I have all the bright lights and the daylight bulbs and stuff, but I love to get out in the sunshine sometimes as a programmer. I'm way too pasty white for my own good. So sometimes it's good to get in the sunshine and just, I like to be around people too. Like that's another thing. Like if you're lonely and you're alone all the time working on your shit, sometimes it does help to be around people. And weirdly, I've always been more productive in a chaotic environment. Like it seems like if there's people walking around and shit happening everywhere, I can put my headphones in and I can concentrate more with chaos than I can being alone in my fortress. Uh, so those are my three tips, I think, to stop procrastination. I think each one of them has its own important role. I think making decisions, no matter what, even if they're the wrong decisions, is a good move. Because taking action is the lesson there. I think uh, breaking tasks into actionable chunks that are 10 to 30 minutes each is a great way to kind of not only get started because you have all your actionable items in a list, but also keep going because you have momentum and you can check things off. And number three, change your environment. Get out of the house, go places, try and figure shit out like that. That usually all, almost always solves my procrastination issues. Um, like I said, I'm still working on it, still figuring things out. I'm sure there are other things out there that help. I'm sure I'll do a follow-up uh, to this sometime in the future if anything else I learn or I discover or I create for myself. I'd love to share it with you guys as always. But once again, I'm Tim Ruswick, and I'll see you guys next time.